I remember we had a writing camp that we were uh, doing in Southern California, and um, the night before, uh, m my youngest son, Rufus, God bless him, uh, decided that he was like, hey, Dad, I know you have to work tomorrow, so what I was thinking is that what I would do tonight is not sleep at all. And I was like, that's a great idea, son. I'm really proud of you. And so I stayed up with him a bunch of the night and um, sitting on my couch at like 3.30 in the morning, probably watching a dinosaur documentary, um, I kind of got a few melodies in my head and um, these this kind of these kind of lyrics. Um, there's there's just some problems that only God can fix, and there's just some battles flesh and blood can't win. And I was like, oh, that's kind of cool. Like maybe we'll see what that is. And, and the next day, you know, I think um, I had to write in the morning, and then we had a break, and then we had to write in the afternoon with um, Naomi and Ryan Ellis, um, and then another guy named Daniel Bashta, and. Um, and so we kind of were throwing ideas out there and I was like, I, I was like, Hey, like I kind of have really, I have like this line, you know, <laughs> there's just some problems only God can fix. And, and I had the melody to it and, um, uh, and I was like, I think it could be really cool to write a song called God problems, you know, like, and, and so we just started having this conversation and about, about it. And I, you know, I just remember us all talking about. You know, there are problems that all of us are trying to reconcile, whether it be in our own lives or in our jobs or um, in our in our country and in government or in our churches or, or wherever it is. And I think that there are so many things that I'm like, man, like there are, we need to be humble enough to go, there are some problems that are God-sized problems that only God can fix. And And I just was like, man, that would be such a powerful confession to put into... Um, the mouths of believers, especially if we could do it in a song that was like really compelling um, and, and, and really uh, authoritative. And so we kind of uh, just started unpacking all of those lyrics. And Naomi is just so amazing um, whenever you're writing with her because that um, she just, it's like, she just has this flow and this spontaneity and she's just such a incredible worship leader that it's like even in the room, just with three other people, she's leading worship in the room. And she's, and you can sense in her that that space of leading worship is so natural to her that that's just what she brings into the room. And so the way that she was just flowing on the, the chorus and these kind of these interesting um, melodies and the way that they were all falling, I was like, man, like this song has so much identity to it and and so we, the song kind of really came together quite quickly in the room. And, um, and then I think we, at a point we had to, we had to go on a break uh, for like a couple of people had calls and stuff to take. And then it ended up being Naomi and I back in the room first before the other guys got back. And we sat down and we were just kind of like trying to work out this bridge and you know, we were just saying, you know, like what would be, what would be the type of thing where like in the bridge where we could get people to like re-up a little bit and like sort of like re-buy into the song. And, um, and you know, she was like, you know, what, someone let the people know. And I was like, oh, that would be, that would be amazing. From there, it was someone let the devil know. And it was just this like, all of a sudden, it, there was this pivot there that there was a, there was a joy to this song, and and all of a sudden the not by power, not by might didn't become. It stopped being this like um, desperate cry as much as it was like, oh, we're singing this because we know what we have at our disposal.